Welcome back everybody. I'm going to be going over a question I saw in the Metrology subreddit, and it's quite an interesting one. So the user had posted an image similar to this, where there was a pattern of three holes and then a fourth hole, um, and both of them had the same uh, feature control frame, which was a composite positional tolerance with the upper segment to 0.5 and the lower segment to 0.25. And the user had basically asked, you know, what does this mean and is this legal because it was really puzzling people at work. So I thought I would just go over that today. I'm going to go over how I would interpret this before I talk about the legality because I think the legality gets quite nuanced and difficult to answer sometimes, especially because so many things aren't explicitly stated in the standard. Uh, but what it means is quite interesting, I'd say. So we're taking advantage in the drawing of a couple things from the standard. One is composite positional tolerancing, and the second one is simultaneous requirements. And sometimes designers aren't aware of this, but based on the original post, I imagine the, uh, the designer was aware of this. I've drawn this so that the upper segment tolerance zone is in is this blue circle, and then the black circle is the actual feature. And I'm just going to go over the simultaneous requirements aspect of this first. So simultaneous requirements is what happens when two features or two patterns of features have the same datum references in the same order and at the same material condition. Um, when those conditions are met, they're treated as a single pattern. So in this case, both of these, this pattern of, of holes and this hole have no datum reference frame. So they share a common datum reference frame, which is no datum reference frame, and it's in the same order. So these four holes for this upper segment tolerance is treated as a single, uh, single pattern. So all that means is that these holes are locked by, locked together by the basic dimensions. Where do those basic dimensions come from? Well, they were excluded from the drawing, so they would either be from the CAD model or, you know, just pulled, or, or maybe they're on a different view, but I think they just weren't shown in this, in this example. So the tolerant zones are locked relative to each other. They're a single pattern, but these holes can all move around within the tolerant zone independently, right? So they can sort of wiggle around as long as the crosshair stays within the tolerance zone. Everything's fine. But the designer also added this second segment. So now we'll talk about that. Before I talk about what this lower segment actually does, I'd like to point out that I've erased the fourth hole, or I've just covered up in white, and there's a reason for that. And it's because when you're looking at a lower segment of a feature, simultaneous requirements does not apply. So the simultaneous requirements that apply to this top segment do not apply to this lower segment. So we are looking at this pattern of three holes basically in a vacuum. So this lower segment, it adds another positional tolerance zone that the features must lie within. And you might see that these two holes are lying within both the red and blue zone, but this, this one up here is not. This one lies outside of the zone. But here's the cool thing about a lower segment these positional tolerances can actually float around independently of the upper segment as long as you can figure out a way to have the features access within both segments simultaneously. So we can actually just move this upper segment up like that. And then the other thing that it can do is it can actually rotate, assuming that there is not a datum feature in this segment that prevents rotation. So onto the legality of this, I think there's two things that I see as jumping out to people as possibly not allowed in the standard. Uh, the first one is that there's no datum in the feature control frame, 
But there's actually no problem with that. There's nothing in the standard that says that you need to have a datum in a feature control frame to control a pattern of holes. This could be the primary establishing feature that everything else relates to. Um, there's, there's no problem with that. It's an incomplete drawing, so at the moment everything else is just floating in space. But I'll show an example of where something like this might make sense later in the video. The second thing that jumped out to me was the use of a composite positional tolerance for a single hole. And I'm gonna say that this is probably a no-go because you can see the composite positional tolerancing, it says for to locate a feature, feature of size patterns. Um, so it refers to patterns, it doesn't refer to individual features. So I think this might be a bit of a no-go. However, I think if I were to see this, there is a way that we can interpret it, and I'll go to that now. To interpret this lower segment, we really need to look at fundamentally what a position tolerance is. And in this case, based off of this symbol here, we know that it is a cylindrical zone, the length of the feature, within which the entire axis of the feature must lie. And normally we would relate this to another feature and we'd say, you know, it's some distance away and then it's got some, some orientation relative to a feature. But if you take all of that away, what do you have? You've got a cylindrical tolerance zone that is free to move and rotate. And what does that sound a lot like? Well, that sounds to me a lot like a straightness tolerance zone. So fundamentally, this is controlling the straightness of the feature. So to recap the interpretation of this drawing, we've got four holes that we'd like to be positioned amongst themselves within 0.5 millimeters. Then we have this pattern of three holes that amongst themselves needs to be positioned within 0.25 millimeters. And then we've got this fourth hole that we want to be straight within 0.25 millimeters. So I guess the question people might have is, well, what would a part like this even do? Why would we, why would we have a bunch of datumless holes? What would be the purpose? And I think I've got a potential, a potential answer for that question, and I'll show you now. So one time this might be useful is if you had a part and it had these two holes and the holes are running on rods, and then the rest of the, the part is clearance to everything else, and maybe there's some sort of interaction that happens on this face at some point, but in, in, in that kind of case, you would go, I've got two times some hole with a, some tolerance, and then you're gonna have to do a calculation that's probably similar to a fixed fastener calculation to figure out the positional tolerance. But because they are the primary feature that's going to locate and orient the part. They're, you don't give it a datum. It doesn't make sense to give it a datum because they are the primary locator of the part. So instead, what you'd probably do is you'd probably call this the datum A, and then let's say the outside of this, this part, maybe you want to give it some extremely loose tolerance, let's say 5 millimeters, because nothing is you know, closer than 10 millimeters to the part, so the outside doesn't matter much. And then you would want to locate or uh, relate this profile to the datum A. So something like that might make sense. Hopefully you found this uh, interesting and useful, and if you did, definitely like the video and subscribe, and until next time.